Okay, let's talk about direct and inverse variation. So this is an interesting um, uh, topic, and a lot of students, uh, you know, when they study this, don't really have a good grasp on what this variation uh, concept uh, really is. So I'm going to explain the difference between direct and inverse uh, variation and, obviously, what they are. So here we have uh, two kind of formulas that we're going to be using. Okay, this is the one for direct, and this is the one for inverse, and we have this y, k, and x, and we're going to get to all of that in just one second. But first, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years, I constructed what I like to believe is one of the best, uh, most robust, comprehensive, video-based online math help programs there is. You could be the judge of that by following the link in the description if you're interested. But uh, in my math help program, I really... Um, you know, teach full and complete lessons. Like what I do on YouTube are quick tutorials. In my math help program, it's complete full instructions, uh, full instruction, and I solve literally thousands and thousands of problems. So the video-based, you can go in and, you know, see how actual problems are solved. Very, very powerful. It's taken me a long time uh, to build. So whether you need to take a full math course or need help with the course that you're in, my program can help you out. Also, as a math teacher, I just can't help to stress and remind you the importance of taking notes. If your notes are anything less than uh, as perfect as you can make them, then you need to improve. Okay, Note taking is the most critical skill uh, as uh, a math student. Okay? You need to know how to take great math notes. So improve if you need to improve. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I actually offer notes. You can find those in the description uh, as well. And those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and a trigonometry. Okay, so let's get into this concept of direct and inverse variation. And I got a nice little kind of uh, way to think about this, right? So here is a situation that would uh, model direct variation. Okay, and here's a situation that would model inverse variation variation. So let's talk about direct variation. So things, let's even just talk about the word itself. We're talking about variation, right? So what does that mean, right? Variation. Oh, it doesn't sound like it's something that, you know, varies. It's like there's change, right? It's like something is, you know, related to something and, you know, we're talking about, oh, this is, it could, it's varying, it's changing, okay? And that's kind of exactly what's going on. How things relate to one another, how things change with one another, their their relationship, if you will. So a direct variation, we can kind of think of uh, an example of something like this. So this is my a little sketch of a pot. Let's call this a, maybe like a pot of water or something on a stove. Here's some uh, fire. And let's say we got a cover on, on our little water here. Okay, so here's our little water. Da, 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 da. And we put the fire on. And um, what's going to happen? Well, um, as the temperature goes up, okay, as this fire gets hotter and hotter, what's going to happen with the pressure inside the uh, pot, okay? Of course, there's a cover on it. So hopefully, all of you, okay, you're going to say, oh, yeah, that pressure is going to go up. Maybe all of us have experience in the kitchen, right? When you, <laughs> you're boiling something, you had something on, and the next thing you know, all this foam stuff comes out, and you're like, ah, what did I do? And then you shut the fire off, and uh, you you know, you know kind of clean up the mess, right? So this would be an example of direct variation. As temperature goes up, okay, pressure goes up. So temperature and pressure vary or change directly, okay? There's a direct correlation. And this is the formula here for direct variation. It's y equals kx. So let's just look at this um, here, mathematically speaking. k, all right, and k is the same thing here uh, when we discuss uh, inverse variation. But k is what we call the constant of variation. It's just a, a number. But algebraically speaking, you can see that if I increase the value of x, if I make this a larger number, my y is also going to go up, okay? So just like our example here, if I increase the temperature here on the stove, my pressure in my pot is going to go up directly, okay? So this this has a direct correlation, direct variation, okay? All right, so let's talk about inverse variation. This could be a little more confusing for students, but um, 
Hopefully this is a pretty good example. So this is my idea of a balloon. Okay, so you just draw a little, you know, blow up a little balloon, not a water balloon, just kind of blow something up. Maybe it's someone's birthday party. And here there's a certain uh, static pressure, let's say, you know, we're not licking any air out inside of the balloon. Now the balloon has a certain volume to it, okay? Now what happens if I decrease the volume of the balloon? Now how could I do that? Well, maybe I'll just kind of take my little hands here and I'll try to squish the balloon. Okay, we have all done that, right? We're like, how far can I squish this balloon? And you're kind of like, eh, you're trying to like squish it in. So if I do that, what happens to the pressure? Okay, if I decrease the volume, which I'm kind of squeezing it in, well, the pressure is going to go up. Okay, the pressure is going to go up. So this has an inverse relationship. As this goes down, this goes up. Whereas our other example is this goes up, this goes up. As temperature goes up, pressure goes up. Here, if I decrease the volume, okay, by you know bringing this in, pressure is going to go up. So this is inversely. Um, uh, th these two things vary inversely. They change inversely. In other words, this one goes down, while the other one goes up. Okay, kind of like a teeter totter type of thing or a seesaw, depending on how you uh, learned it, right? This goes down, this goes up. Inverse variation, direct variation. And the formula for inverse variation is uh, yx equals k. Now let's think about this algebraically. k is a constant, it's constant of variation. So this number stays the same, okay? So in both example, or both uh, situations here, this number stays the same. So let's say Algebraically, if my y is going up and I need to have this number stay the same, well, the only way I can do that or to keep this number the same is to uh, proportionally be bringing down my x amount. Okay, so if my y is going to go up, well, then my x is going to have to go down if I intend to keep this number the same. Okay, so those are the two uh, general formulas for both direct and inverse uh, variation. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at a basic example, and I don't wanna make this video too long. So we'll take a look at a basic example of uh, variation, and this is this could be um, an either uh, uh, um, inversely proportional, or inversely, um, uh, ver inverse variation or direct variation. Uh, I just happened to pick a direct variation, but it would work the same way. Okay, so this is like a really common fundamental basic uh, type of problem. Then of course you have a lot of other type of word problems, but if you understand how to work these basic structures of these problems, then you'll be fine with these other type of problems. Okay, so here it is. So we can say X and Y vary directly. Hmm, interesting, kind of like our our uh, pot on our stove, right? So X and Y vary directly, okay? When X is three, Y is six. So here's some information, we're gonna need to use this. So X and Y vary directly when X uh, is equal to three, Y is equal to six. What is Y when X is equal to 10? Or this is a real common type of variation problem. So let's break this down and uh, solve this particular problem. Now, if you notice here, we're talking about uh, things that vary directly. So that is your indicator that, oh, I'm dealing with direct variation, so I'm gonna be using this formula. So focus here, focus on this side, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go to this side. So don't look at this yet. Um, you know, uh, keep your eyes over here with me. Okay, so we're talking about direct variation. Things vary directly, so we need to break out that general formula. Now. What you're gonna need with all these problems is that constant uh, variation, that K value, okay? We need to have that. Now, sometimes you're given that, but often, more often than not, you're not given the K value. So your first thing is, is you have to use the given information in the problem to find K, okay? That's what you're gonna need to do first. So how can I find K? Well, I already have some um, established data here, some, uh, some information. So if X and Y are very directly, I know that when um, X was equal to three, Y was equal to six. So I could just plug in uh, for X, um, that value three and Y is six. So I know when X was three, Y was six, and there's some sort of multiplier there, that constant variation, that K value. So then you can see this is just a basic 
algebraic equation. All right, so this is 6 equals k3, or you can write it this way, 3k equals 6. Okay, clearly you can see this is super easy to solve for k. Just divide both sides of the equation by 3, and k is equal to 2. Okay, so now this is my constant of variation. Constant meaning it's a fixed number. So instead of having my general uh, equation for direct variation, which is y equals kx, I now know k. Okay, it's 2. So now I want to use this, okay? Not y equals kx, that's the general general formula. I know what k is equal to 2 because this uh, information was enough for me to solve for k. Okay, so now here is my formula that describes this relationship. Whatever's going on here between x and k, it could be temperature, pressure, whatever, whatever it might be, right? So now I can get to this second half of the uh, of what I need to do, and that is the actual question. What is y when x is equal to 10? It doesn't get any easier than that. All I have to do in my uh, specific uh, formula here is plug in uh, 10 for x. Okay, so I'll replace this x AF with 10, and then 2 times 10 uh, gives me y is equal to 20, and that is the solution, okay? So this is a very, very typical type of uh, variation problem, and I could have just turned the words around and said uh, x and y vary uh, inversely, okay? And you would just use the other formula and still solve for k, okay? So you have to learn how to, uh, one, know what variation is, know the difference between uh, direct and uh, inverse variation, when, especially when we're talking about word problems, and then understand that most of these problems, are, there's going to be given information in the problem such that you can be able to solve for k. Often, sometimes they'll give you the constant variation, but more often than not, you'll have to solve for it. Then you can rewrite the equation and then answer the, uh, the question. Uh, that you're looking to uh, answer, okay? All right, so uh, direct and inverse variation, definitely a very uh, important little topic that sneaks up in algebra courses. So this is typically where this is taught, but it's not one of these things that are going to go away. You're going to see this over and over again. So don't, you know, don't be like, ah, I don't really need to know this. Yes, you do. It's not that hard. Okay, and remember, watching math is not the same thing as learning. So if you like this video and it helped you out, hey, I'd certainly appreciate you smashing that like button. That's why I made the video, to help you out. But, you know, what I really want you to do is to apply what you learned by practicing math. Okay, so that's the key to really improving. Um, also, um, if you want to uh, have additional resources, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, hopefully you are, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel organizing various playlists that are there for you. But my best resources, you can find those in the links uh, in the descriptions of this video. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.